Hello Internet people! Did you know that a table of contents on your WordPress article can help you with SEO? Yeah, Google is able to pick up those links and place them in the search results. So when the users click on them, they actually land in a certain part of your article. Not only that, but it also helps your readers to jump to a section they are most interested in and just gives a general structure to your whole article. In this video, I'll show you how to create and add a table of contents to your post or page with a WordPress plugin. It's showtime. Tape sweat punch. As you can see here in Google search results, I have my article here and then you have these links here. These are actually from the table of content. These are just anchor links into the, my page. So if I click on this one, it'll jump in the middle of the article to the right spot. Just to clarify, it doesn't mean you're going to have these links in search results just by having a table of contents, but it increases the chances of them appearing there. All right, I'm in my WordPress dashboard and let's just install the plugin by going to plugins, add new, and then type in table of content. And what we're looking for is this lucky WP table of contents, install it. And why I prefer this one over the other ones, this seems to be very active. The developers behind this are still active and they're improving constantly. And the best part, if you use a Gutenberg, then it's also working with that. And then don't forget to activate it once it's installed. And scroll down until you see Lucky WP and click on settings. And here we're going to set up everything for the table of contents. Super easy, straightforward, nothing much you can even think about here. To keep your mind sharp, here's Arnie's brain teaser. You are not you, you are me. It starts with minimal count of headings. So if there's more than two headings, it will create the table of content. And then this depth is quite important. It's what kind of headers it's going to include. For example, H1, H2, H3. In my case, I don't like if it's too far, so uh, I will just limit to three. But in any case, this is up to you. Then you can decide how it will display. Numeration just means uh, there'll be numbers in front of the table of content so that it's a bit more understandable for the user what to expect. You can also remove it or just have no Roman numbers and stuff like that. And then here you can give another title. So let's say I want to actually say table of contents. And this one, I don't think you need it. It's just like a toggle where if you leave it on, you can open and close it. It's like an accordion. I don't need it, so I'm just going to disable it. And keep the smooth scroll. It, it looks really nice when it scrolls to the right anchor point. This is later on, we're going to play around with this. You'll need it potentially later and just save the changes. But do it quickly before Mini Godzilla eats your sword. And then in the appearance tab, you have more options to customize. You can play around with this. It's really up to your taste. You can change background colors and title colors and links and stuff like that. Pretty basic stuff. And here is where it gets interesting you can actually enable auto insert. So that means you don't need to even create the, the table of contents yourself. You don't need to insert it into your uh, post. So you could just enable it and it will be always all the post types you choose. So for example, here, post, page, media, template. I would just keep it for posts. That makes most sense. And you can also decide uh, where where it will show up. So before the first heading, maybe a top or certain uh, first block or paragraph. I like to place the table of contents myself. So I'm going to disable this for now and just save it so that it didn't do anything. Arnie, what do you think? You should not drink. And make tutorials. Let's take a look at this. This processing headings, you can actually skip it. It's not important if you're not setting the auto insert. And the miscellaneous, uh, actually here, you can tell it to skip certain headings. So for example, I don't want H4, H5, H6. And then you can also specify headings that contain certain text. You can skip that too. That's pretty handy. And here you can choose how it, the anchor point will be called. So this is like addition to the link. 
it's called hash so it's going to give it a name and i'm just going to keep it as default so it's going to be my heading and you can also convert to lower cases i replace the underscores with dashes this is really up to you there's no difference for seo or anything like that and then you have the seo block this is a way for you to hide the table of contents from search engines so then just check these two and it's not going to show up for the search engines but i actually want them to pick this up so i'm going to keep it and the rest uh, you can just keep it as default yeah, and then save the changes oh really all right so let's take a look at a post i'm going to go to posts all posts and then for example this one this is my test website, so it's a bit of gibberish. Right here, I have heading one, heading two, another heading. So these are all H2s. And then I have subheading like H3, another H3, and an H4 just to show. And then if I scroll to the top, let's say I want to have the table of contents after this quote. If you have Gutenberg, you add it through this button and then just choose table of contents if you don't see it here just type table should come up first or second and choose that one and it will look like this it doesn't show all the links it will include but that's okay you don't need them right now it's gonna work when you go to your website so let's update and if you're using the old classic editor you should just look for an icon like this one it's usually in the VisiWig, the field where you type in all your text. It's just there on the top. So just look for an icon like this one. And then if I preview this, you can see there's a table of content here. And so now you have the power to do anything like chalk. Hey, if you like this video so far, I would appreciate if you can hit the like button. That would help me a lot. Thanks. If I click on, let's say this, another heading, it will scroll down to the right place. Because of my sticky navigation, it kind of covered the heading of that. So this is where you need to go back to the tool and it's under settings, table of contents. Let's open it up. And here in the general, if you scroll down, there was this scroll offset top. This is just a setting that you tell it to actually scroll a bit less or a bit more than the heading itself. So let's say I add now 70 here, save changes. And now scroll up and I refresh it. And then scroll down again, I'm gonna click on it. You can see there's enough space for the user to see where they actually are. So this, offsets the scroll a little bit and it works really well like this arnie did you like that trick and one thing i want to mention is actually if you have some special requirements only for a few articles so let's say this one needs to be different from the default settings you just click on this one and click on the edit icon you can see this pop-up where you can customize everything based on the needs of your articles. For example, for this one, let's say I want to actually show the depth of the fields is four, so I can set it here and then save it. You can see here if there's anything that differs from the default settings. And that's about it. That's how easy it is to set up a table of contents. It's automatic, so you don't need to do it. You could do it manually, but there's just no reason to do that because the plugin makes it so easy to set it up and maybe even help you with your SEO. Oh yeah, one more thing I wanna show you. You can actually add this table of contents to your sidebar. So you just go to, to appearance, digits, and I have here my primary sidebar. Here you see table of contents. You can actually just add it to primary sidebar, add digit. And you can see it appeared there. I can put it on top, customize it, save it, and then it should appear in the sidebar of your website. My name is Robert, and if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about how to improve your website, get more traffic and other website related stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe Ding button dong. so you don't miss out on anything. Here are two videos that I think you should watch next. Whoosh!